So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be looking at some examples of antiderivatives. So first, let's remember what a derivative is. So we take something like 5x cubed, and we want to find the derivative of this. We're looking for the expression that gives the instantaneous rate of change of this expression. And to do it with a, with a function like 5x cubed, we can use the power rule. So we have the 3 up in the exponent, that comes down, we multiply it by the 5, and we get 15x, and we subtract 1 from the exponent and get 2. So the process of finding a derivative is, for example, the process of going from 5x cubed to 15x squared. When we find an antiderivative, we're simply going in the opposite direction. We're starting with a function, and we're looking for a function whose derivative is the one we start with. So if we started with 15x squared, then an antiderivative would be 5x cubed. So let's look at some examples. Let's start with perhaps the simplest kind of function, namely a constant function. So let's suppose that the derivative of f is equal to 2. Well, then what does that say about f? What kind of function has a constant derivative? Well, we know those kinds of functions. They're lines. So this thing must be something like 2x. Right? And we know the derivative of 2x is 2. But there's one extra thing we have to make sure to do. We have to put a plus c here. Because we know that adding a constant to a function doesn't change the derivative. Right? The derivative of 2x becomes 2, and the derivative of c, no matter what c is, is 0. So the general form of the antiderivative of f prime of x equals 2 is this f of x, 2x plus c. Let's look at another example. Let's now suppose that f prime of x is 2x. Well, what can we say then about f of x. Well, a function that gives us 2x as a derivative is going to have to have an x squared in it. Now we have to figure out what, if any, coefficient we want out front to make sure that we get a 2. When we, when we take the derivative of x squared, the 2 comes down, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we have x times 2. So this actually gives us everything we need. But let's not forget the plus c. Let's look at another example. So let's now suppose that f prime of x is 7x cubed. So the coefficients here aren't going to work out quite as nicely. But we can still figure out what f must be. So we know we want a function whose derivative involves an x cubed. That kind of thing is going to come from a function with x to the fourth. Right? Because when we take the derivative of this, the 4 will come down, and we're going to get an x cubed term. So all we need to figure out is what coefficient to put in front of x to the fourth, such that when we take the derivative of this thing, we end up with a 7. In other words, we're looking for the number such that that number times 4 gives us 7. And that is 7 fourths. Right? The 4 comes down. 7 over 4 times 4 is just 7. And with the plus c, we see that f of x is 7 fourths x to the fourth plus c. Let's do one more example. Let's suppose now that f prime of x is 3 over x to the fifth. And we want to find f of x. Well, when we're finding antiderivatives, we generally want to do the same thing that we do when we're finding derivatives, which is rewrite an expression like this as 3 times x to the negative fifth which enables us more easily to use the power rule. Here we're going to use the antiderivative version of the power rule like what we did above. So we know that we want x to the negative fifth 
in the derivative. That's going to come from something like x to the negative fourth. Again, we have to figure out what this coefficient is. This coefficient needs to be the number such that when you multiply it by negative 4, we get 3. Well, that means that it's negative 3 over 4. And not forgetting the plus c, we find that f of x is negative 3 fourths x to the negative fourth plus c.